Good afternoon, everybody. It is July 8th here on the Pro Football Chase podcast. And today joining me for an interview is two-time Pro Bowl offensive tackle, Jermon Bushrod, played for the New Orleans Saints, spent some time with the Dolphins, and is retired now, but he's joining the chats in football. So Jermon, thanks for joining me today. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. I appreciate uh, this opportunity to come on. All right, bro. Well, let's talk a little bit about your journey to the NFL. You were a fourth round pick in 2007 out of Towson. Yeah. So talk about that pre-draft process and what do you remember the most about it? Uh, it, it was kind of a little whirlwind for me for a while, you know, coming from Towson, which was back then called a, a, a 1AA school. Um, I didn't get a combine invite. Um, I had, a, I had an all-star appearance, but I couldn't play in it uh, because I messed my foot up. So I was kind of behind the eight ball, um, you know, as far as trying to get drafted or helping my stock out, you know, because especially as a younger guy, you wanted to get that opportunity to be in front of as many scouts and coaches as you can. So getting a combine invite was something that was pretty important to me. It didn't happen, but I, I think that really just kind of, you know, lit a, lit a fire up underneath me. And, um, it was wild, though, you know, because since I didn't get the, the chance to go to the combine, I, I took 12 visits in three weeks to go see all the teams that were potentially interested in me and, um, you know, just did a lot of training. And I had a good agent. I had good people behind me, and I had to make sure I had to do whatever, everything I had to do on my end uh, to make a good first impression, and I guess I did because the Saints took a chance on me in the fourth round. This is an interesting question. I like to ask a lot of the players that I get on what the most difficult part of the transition from college to the NFL was. So for you, Jermon, what was it like kind of going from Towson to the NFL? What was the biggest challenge in your opinion? The biggest challenge was getting myself caught up physically, I want to say. Um, you know, coming from Towson, I didn't have NFL aspirations. Till my, I spent five seasons there. But I didn't have NFL aspirations until I was, you know, my redshirt sophomore. So you're looking at my third year in college, you know. NFL was, was never a dream of mine, never was something that I thought I could potentially do. Um, I, I grew up, I wanted to play baseball. Like, I enjoyed playing baseball. But obviously, as I got taller, bigger, wider, baseball was something that my skills kind of declined a little bit. And football was my opportunity to go to school. And it was my opportunity to make it to the next level because I got introduced to some pretty – great people who helped change my, you know, my mindset and it helped me get a foot in the door. But as soon as I got to, you know, as soon as I got to the league, me, myself, I'm, I think I was drafted into a perfect situation, to be honest with you. Um, I sat the bench for two years. You know, I was on the active roster, but I wasn't on the practice squad, but I sat the bench for two years and I maybe got action in six or seven games in special teams. You know, so I just think that I was I was patient and that was a good thing. But they were, you know, Sean Payton and the rest of the coaching staff were patient with me. So I had to, to me, I had to do some catching up, especially that first year. But, um, and there was some growing pains early on in my career, but it, it's a growth process for me. It was always just about finding a way to make myself a little bit better every single year. And, and that's kind of the mindset I took for those 12 years I was in the league. That's a perfect segue because you were a two-time pro bowler, as mentioned, and you won a Super Bowl with the New Orleans Saints. You were the starting left tackle in that game. So talk a little bit more about your experience with the New Orleans Saints, the organization, and what it means to you now as a retired football player looking back on those accomplishments. Oh, uh, you know, you know, I, I owe a lot of my success to, you know, to the Saints, to the coaching staff, to, um, you know, because they believed in me and they groomed me to be, uh, starting left tackle there for a while. It was, uh, I'm telling you, man, it was, it was a great journey. I, I was able to win the Super Bowl there. I was able to get better there. I, I met, you know, some really great people, some close friends that I'm still in contact with today. Um, there, New Orleans is, is a special place to me. My wife's from there. My first child was born there. My third child was born there as well when I went back in 2018 to finish out my career there. So New Orleans is a special place. You know, you know they, they've been through a lot you know, with Katrina and, and a couple other things down there. So, you know, it's very easy to go down there and, and just get yourself into the culture. And, and, you know, they make you feel like family down there. It's one of those southern uh, southern cities, southern regions that, you know, they just 
you, you know, you play for the Saints, you, it feels like family, and, you know, you want to go and try to do everything you can on the field to uh, be a bright spot for a lot of people in that, in that community. And we, um, I think we stepped up to that challenge. You know, we, we enjoyed that challenge. We stepped up to it and we won. And uh, like I said, man, the Saints is a special place to me because, you know, I did spend three years in Chicago, two years in Miami after I left the first time, but we went back there and I retired as a Saint. So that, you know, obviously the place means, uh, means a lot to me. Yeah, and you look at, you know, the New Orleans Saints and the fan base and uh, Houdat Nation and, you know, yeah. even when you just watch games, man, the New Orleans fans are just different. And so that's kind of alluding to what you're talking about, the culture there in New Orleans. So when you were playing in that Mercedes-Benz Superdome, especially in the biggest playoff games, how fun was it with that atmosphere? I mean, it was fun. It, it was fun, you know. Um, I'm just glad we had the crowd on our side, you know, when we were making those playoff runs and making that Super Bowl run. Uh, you know, I, I had my hands full, though. I had my hands full, so I really couldn't. It, it, you know, it was fun for me, but it was like, look, I, I got I to gotta try to block this guy who has 20 sacks this year. You know, you're talking about Jared Allen, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's uh, – the game atmosphere is fun. I actually, I got a chance to go back and, 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 and after I was retired, I got to go, a chance to go and take my son to a couple of games. I was like, damn, like I see why people love coming to the game because it's electric in here. Uh, even though they did lose, it was it was a fun time. But uh, you know, having that crowd behind us uh, and when we was playing in the Superdome, that was that was our twelfth man. You know, when you was coming into that Superdome, man, it was going to be a rowdy place for anybody to come in and play. And um, shit, it was fun. I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, it was. It was it was one of the best times of my life, just being down there, being with the guys. You know, we had a work hard, play hard type of mentality, and that's what we did. We won a lot of games, but we enjoyed ourselves off the field as well. You just talked about Jared Allen. Now, I know this is kind of a hard question because you spent a lot of time in the NFL and a lot of starts as an offensive tackle, but if you had to list a couple of defensive ends that really gave you some trouble coming off that edge, who would you say? I could probably pinpoint, pinpoint like that, that 2009 season was the first year I got my start. And uh, like I said earlier, I, I had some growing pains. Um, you know, I had the opportunity to face DeMarcus Ware at his prime. And um, he got me a couple times back in that 2009 run. We were 13 and 0. He caught me a couple times with a couple sack fumbles. Um, so DeMarcus was always tough because he was always a long arm guy, I always. You know, I always I struggled with him a little bit. We had some good battles. Dwight Freeney was another one. Dwight Freeney is by far one of the best pass rushers I've ever played against. Powerful, low leverage guy. Um, his top three moves all look the same. You know, until he kind of gets to this point, all of his moves look the same. Uh, and another person that I have to probably say is I'll, I'll go with John Abraham. John Abraham out of Atlanta. Uh, I had the uh, I had the opportunity to play against him. Just another great player. Just another great player, but it would probably be ranking them in that order: Demarcus Dwight and John Abraham. Yeah, those are some some big time rushers, and man, I could just imagine how how difficult and how at the same time how exciting it was to go up against those guys in their primes. But Jermon, how much has the game changed? You entered the league in 2007. Now we're getting ready for the 2020 season, and it just seems like these offensive tackles and linemen in general on both sides of the ball are getting more athletic. They're getting quicker. They're getting stronger. So as you exited the league in 2018 and you look at the game now, what are some changes that you've kind of pointed out? It's, it's funny that you say that because I was just thinking about this yesterday, kind of just to myself, you know, over the years you've always seen, um, these different types of sporting facilities that are catered to receivers and DBs that works on their footwork and their hands and, um, and quarterback, you know, you get these quarterback camps, but now defensive linemen, offensive linemen, they have their own training facilities. They have their own sets of exercises. And, you know, I think as we grow smarter when it comes to the sporting world, but, and also uh, how we train our bodies and what we put in our bodies to fuel our bodies the correct way. I think linemen, you know, you're not just big, strong guys anymore. You know, you've always been big, strong guys, but now you're big, strong guys who take care of themselves, who eat right, who can go off to these different training facilities. I enjoy watching some of my friends 
you know, just do lineman specific type of stuff every single off season. And you can see it's carrying over because these linemen are, they're playing a lot better. They're getting longer deals. And, uh, you know, their technique has been great to see. And there's a lot of good linemen who, who are out there making a great name for themselves. So I just think it's more attention to detail. We have linemen specific training facilities now that these guys are going to, and they are, you know, they're having good long careers. And uh, I'm fortunate I had a, I had a, I was able to kind of grow from 2007 to 2018 when I was, you know, finished playing. Um, I was able to implement some of that stuff myself. And I think that's what kind of helped my journey uh, along the way, you know, just becoming better, smarter, um, you know, taking care of myself physically, mentally, emotionally, and putting the right stuff in my body. How does it make you feel seeing a guy like Laramie Tunzel come out and break the bank, you know, getting that $22 million per year offensive tackles? And as you just talked about, Jermon, I mean, this is a position that is starting to really rise up. You're starting to see teams take a little bit more interest and a little bit more, you know, desire to pay these guys and retain them the importance, the value of that position. So as you see that market continue to soar up and now you're going to get guys like Quentin Nelson, the guard, who's probably going to hit, you know, the top of the market when he comes up. How does that make you feel? First off, big shout out to Larry McTonson, man. That's my guy. I had the opportunity to be with him when he was a Miami Dolphin. And, uh, you know, he actually started out his career at guard. Then he went over and got into that left tackle spot. He hasn't looked back. He got the opportunity to go to Houston to be with, uh, you know, to protect um, that quarterback over there, Deshaun Watson. And, He's doing, he's doing a great job. You know, Larry was, Laramie was always a hard worker when I was around him. Um, I see that with his growth now, you know, he, he got his Pro Bowl and, and he's continuing to make noise and he went and got the deal that he deserved. You know, you, you, you're deserving of what somebody's paying you and somebody wanted to pay him that. And I'm, I'm, I'm very proud of him. I'm, uh, you know, he's going to be able to take care of himself and his family for a very long time. But, um, He's just been doing a great job. It's all about continuing to grow. And, you know, this, this league, is, the salary cap is going up, and you got to protect these quarterbacks. These quarterbacks are getting a lot of money now. Look at what Patrick Mahomes just signed. You know, so you got to put the people in front of him, and these offensive linemen are taking it upon themselves to be better uh, athletes and, and, and just be better protectors out there. So, you know, these guys want to continue to break the bank, which they should, because, you know, you do sacrifice your mind, body, and soul for this game. And lastly, we know that this COVID pandemic has changed a lot of things. And the NFL right now, they're preparing to start training camp at July 28th. And there's still a lot of uncertainty. There's some things that haven't been answered from the NFLPA's perspective. So when you just think about the season, what's going on, what are your thoughts on the whole situation? You're, you're, you kind of hit the nail on the head, man, uh, when you said there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of question marks right now. I think, I think, you know, from what I've been reading, players are frustrated because they don't really understand the plan, you know, and what is the plan going forward? You know, how are you going to protect these guys? You know, it's already hard enough playing football as it is, but, you know, places like down here in Florida, Texas, California, numbers are continuing to go up, a lot of other places as well. So it's – there is no social distancing when it comes to football. And, you know, you're, especially as a lineman, you're, your hands are on somebody for, you know, five to ten seconds every play every single you know every single day for three hours a day how are these guys going to be protected um I, i'm worried about the quality of the game a little bit you know because you feed off the energy of the crowd if you're an away team and you step into that building it feels like it's you against the whole city you're against the whole region and and it helps you amplify your game up you know are we going to see uh, a product that that we haven't seen before, you know, uh, is it going to live up to the expectations of the usual NFL? I don't know, man. It's a lot of question marks going on over the next few weeks, though. They will get answered, and we're, and we're going to figure out, you know, how the players, how the NFL, and how the NFL PA responds to everything going on, especially with these numbers rising. And I know, guys, you know, you got to take care of not just yourself. You know, you, as a football player and be a, a successful football player, you have to have some kind of level of selfishness to you, you know, because you have to put – you know, you have to put yourself over a lot of different things. So, but when it comes to this, it's something that could potentially harm you. Most guys will be fine because they're young and they're healthy. But, you know, you, you're taking these germs back to your wife, to your kids, to your loved ones, your mother and your father. That's really where the issue is. Um, so I, I think the players are going to be smart about it. I hope they make the best decision possible. 
I would love to see football and, and, and every other sport come back, but safety first. And, you know, we are professional athletes. A lot of people look at us like gladiators and all that good stuff, but we're human beings first. That's well said right there. And I think that's a perspective that a lot of fans need to understand is, you know, you all coming from players. It's, it goes beyond just you. It's your families. It's the fact that you all are going to be traveling during the season from different areas. And, you know, so I certainly understand that. And hopefully we'll see that there's a resolution that does happen between the NFLPA and the NFL and they can return as safely as possible. But Jermon, man, I appreciate you again taking the time out of your day to join me for an interview. I respect you. Congrats on a phenomenal career again. And uh, I hope all is well with you and your family. All right, brother. I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. All right. God bless.